Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Drive By. So How's it going? We're, we're going to come clean a little bit here. So we recorded this whole episode, and we did not have the mic attached. We didn't have it connected. You, you know what, though? We've made it this far, and this is the first time we've ever not had the mic plugged in. So I think we're doing all right. <clears throat> right, but th that's kind of a, a critical fuck-up, however. Yeah. So what was it we were doing here? We were... So at the time, we were just searching because we had just gotten the, uh, the, the tortoise oh, yeah. ability. And we just learned what these And we were do. like, oh, what's that? Oh, it's a cannon that launches us through a thing. And, uh, so we kind of were, uh, actually really, really enjoyed this whole section. Because I remember this was the part where I realized, yeah, you know, I was bringing back the, the fact that we... I ran into, like, spikes on a wall. Yeah. And it didn't... I, I, I don't know if we, like, hit it wrong or something, because it didn't hurt before. Yeah, somehow but, you oops your way into surviving once. But then I, like, ran across it at another occasion and absolutely got killed. So I don't know what's what happened that one time, but I just assumed Yeah. that it was... No, yeah, it's fine. I can just run through it. And it most certainly was not. Yeah. But a lot of... A lot of just trial and error to figure out what's going on in this area, because you know, this section of the game introduces a lot of new mechanics, and I'm okay with that. It does. I'm just, turtle mm. power, the cannon. I'm pretty mm. sure you made the the turtley joke before the turtle power thing. Oh yeah, of course. Well, I mean, it's, it's 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 your turtle power, therefore it is turtle power. I mean, you're not wrong, <laughs> but I believe at this point I was trying to figure out what the heck, like how to get. Like, where I was missing the um, the key. Yeah. Just because a, a lot of it was, oh, I need to revisit everything I've already done that doesn't have spikes in it. Yeah. And, I'm sorry, like, a lot of this is just really frustrating that, <laughs> that I, I messed this up. Yeah. Well, speaking in hindsight, one of the things that I actually realized about this section is, this section is really linear. It actually has one dedicated path. And then by following that dedicated path, it was looping you back around to most of the areas. Like, we were trying to figure out how the heck to use this section. We even kind of debated me providing wrongly that we should try one or two things. But, uh, <laughs> so this is, this is my stupidity here. I thought, hey, maybe the lizard dash will just fly across the screen because I'm a smart boy. And I told you about 17 times that the lizard dash would not work. Yep. And there we were trying it. Who's the bigger fool, though? The fool or the fool that follows him? Which really should just be the slogan of this entire channel. Me making bad decisions and you going along with it. Like, yeah, sure. That <laughs> sounds like a great idea, Brian. I'll go ahead and follow your lead <coughs> and do that thing that I've definitely said does not work. And then you and prove it. And seeing didn't. if it works. <laughs> yeah. Because how smart am I? Yeah, stupid rocket archers. The, the ones that don't shoot rockets and aren't archers? Yeah. Because, sure, mm -hmm. but I believe it that <laughs> you act like you're in danger. We're, we're like watching something I'm spectating. that we've already, yeah, I can see, I can tell. But I believe this was, yeah, this was pretty much just looking for new places that I hadn't been yet. Yeah, because the game at this point had been teaching us to go off the beaten path, and this was the first time where really there was just one path and if we followed that path it'll take us to everywhere we gotta go because we go and you know, we just gotta find that key and then it all just kinda happens right but uh that's one of the things that I'm liking about this Shantae game is that it's doing the Metroidvania thing but it's not overly complicating it and we're just overthinking it at times yeah like the uh what was it the the smelting yeah. Uh, that smelting puzzle, like with the, the weird block mm -hmm. liquid. Where all we had metal to do was push thing. down. Yeah. <laughs> well, because the. Like, you don't think to grab a chain and then move all the way down and continue pulling down because you get to the bottom of a chain like that or a rope or something. Yeah. You press down, you, you would think you just fall off because every other game in history has done that. Exactly. So you don't. I don't know. Like, there. We're expecting this game that's playing off vintage game tropes to adhere to a lot of those, and it's it's, it's not so much subverting our expectations as it's just not taking the, you know, the, the 
route you expect it to take, but not in a, oh, see, I'm being clever. It's more like a, why didn't they think of that kind of thing? And, like, some of the game is brilliant directing of what to do, and other times it's not. The other times it's, what the hell is going on with this game? Why is it doing the thing? Yeah. I mean, I still like the game. Um, yeah. Weirdly, so far... Yeah. Um, comparing it to another Metroidvania we played on the channel, um, it's... I don't think it's better than the, um, the Toho one that we played. Like, it's it's a similar, like... Oh, double focus? Yeah. I mean, this one's clearly better quality. Yeah. But the way that it does its Metroidvania stuff, that one still felt better to me. And I think it's because this game is struggling with its identity. It wants to be a Metroidvania, but it's also leaning onto the mechanics of the previous game, which wasn't a Metroidvania. Yeah. It'd be like trying to put Super Mario Brothers controls into Castlevania, and it just wouldn't... It doesn't quite tick every box for me. I mean, I still love it. It's no Axiom Verge, but, I mean, what game is? Axiom Verge is. True. We're getting Axiom Verge 2 soon. I'm excited. Is there an actual release date for that yet? Uh, it's... Sometime 2020? <laughs> Is what they said. Sometime 2020, Brian. <laughs> I actually haven't checked the guy's Twitter page in a while, because that's where he tends to update everything. Sometime. I forget, I know. In the future year of 2020, <laughs> Brian? Yeah. I sometimes forget that Twitter has updates that are positive, not just seething nonsense. And I haven't checked the guy's Twitter page in a while to see any updates on, on the sequel. All I know is that Nintendo is backing it, which makes me happy. Like, that's the publisher that he should have had the first time. So... I remember you said that his original publisher did screw him over. Who was that? It was Badland Games. Badland Games. And they've since changed their name to Badland Inc. or something like that. Basically, they, they changed their name to try to get away from the problem. Oh, yeah. I, can, I yeah. can't even tell it's the same company. But they were like, yeah, sure, we'll publish the game physically, and we'll, get, we'll also put 75% of our cut into a medical fund for your kid. He never saw a dime from them. Yeah. And then uh, some of the U.S. publishing like came out of his pocket. And then the Wii U version that was promised, uh, Limited Run Games, actually published it out of their pocket at a loss just so that the people who pre-ordered the Wii U version got theirs too. Because they saw how screwed over the guy was. I really liked this puzzle. Yeah, we were mentioning this felt very Donkey Kong Country-esque. Yeah. Definitely had a uh, Barrel Cannon Canyon feel to it. Oh yeah. But it's well, it's well done. It like it, If you pay attention as you're zooming past, you can kind of solve the puzzle as you go because it gives you just enough visual data. It doesn't give you everything at once, so you still have to do trial and error, but all, there's, there's not much cheapness to it. Right. I mean, you don't want to press down there. <laughs> don't doubt me. I'll fucking do it. <laughs> I thought you were gonna. That's... <laughs> You know me. I would exactly. never do such a thing. I have indeed met you. Oh, yeah, we were trying to figure out how to get up from there. Yeah, we kind of kind of assumed we just had to take the bottom route and then go the long way mm -hmm. up from the bottom rather than going from that room. I think was this? Oh, I... You're just backtracking. Already, yeah. forgot by that point I had gotten a little heart thingy. Yeah. The... Uh, I'm trying to think, what? It and here we were just trying to figure out how to loop back around. Yeah. You end up taking the long way. Because the way the map looks in that stage, so much of it looks interconnected. Yeah. But it ends up not actually being yeah. that. As opposed to a bunch of branching paths, it's actually just a figure eight that loops back in on itself. Yeah. But then again, that means it's very clever design. It's a much longer level, but it brings you back to familiar places. What I wish this game would do is that when it brought you back to those familiar places, it opened kind of a permanent shortcut so you could quickly go back the other way. Yeah. Um, that's actually one of the things that I really like about playing Surge 2 all over again is I'm noticing more and more of the design elements in it. Um, your, your like second save point that you find in the game ends up being a primary one for quite a while, but so many of the long paths you take, you'll turn a corner and you'll realize the gate you just opened put you right back there. But that gate now stays open permanently, so you can completely skip, like, 45 minutes of exploring and go right back to where you were and it, without it being fast travel. And it's just, it's just really nice. The game also has a moment where the entire map changes. And the game 
usually doesn't do game breaking like or immersion breaking moments but yeah. there's a door where it's like hey something's coming and if you go through here you can't undo what's about to happen are you sure you've found everything now to their credit the only thing is is the map becomes more complex so stuff that you may have missed before is now a little harder to reach but nothing becomes inaccessible in fact yeah. some of it becomes a little easier to access once the map changes but it does kind of give you the heads up that yeah this this game's about to embiggen slightly embiggen yeah because like stuff hits the fan in a really cool way but uh but it also makes the map a little more complicated because stuff falls on the entire city so now stuff is blocked off new pads are open walls are smashed in places like yeah basically pads change oh yeah nanovirus hurricane basically hits and the whole city is is affected it's pretty cool nanovirus hurricane yeah like nothing is untouched by the destruction and it's these little tiny nano machines hey there was that one part where you yeah, like, let me try it down well because they don't show you anything there <laughs> yeah They're but just it's like yeah you can go every direction it's cool and then they you can just shoot yourself directly right. into it but it didn't feel cheap it felt funny right <laughs> And then I decided, just as a fuck you, I went ahead and <laughs> shot myself downward anyway. Because no one tells me what to do. I do what I want. Because at least this part is well designed, it's funny, it's fast, and it's not like you took damage because you had the thing on. Right. And we just had to figure out this part of the puzzle. Yeah, just kind of... What's the word? Just take stock and suss it out. Yeah, finagling it. Yeah. That's the thing. Took me a second, and I was like, you know what? Okay, I think I got it, maybe. I think you had to kind of nudge me in the right direction, but yeah. I eventually got it. But it was one of those where you don't have to rack your brain. The, the, the solution is right there. It gives you all the tools you need to solve the problem without it, any of it being obtuse. And that's the kind of puzzle solving I like. It's not super easy where it's bashing you over the head with a solution. It still gives you that, that, that hit of endorphins for solving the puzzle, but you're not angry going into the solution. Right. Because uh, we both know these kind of games can, can do some really cheap nonsense at times. Yeah. I'm still remembering Ninja Mode mm -hmm. from, uh, from Half Genie Hero. And then the entire ending of it, just making it feel like the whole thing was a massive waste of time. Yeah, like, it... I'm still kind of irritated that we chose that as the last... Uh, the last DLC to play. Yeah. Like, not specifically the costume DLC in general, but, like, that mode. Yeah. Because, like, the the Mighty Switch Force mode was fine. Oh, yeah. That was actually enjoyable. The Good intro there, too. Yeah. The the weird Hydra. Not my favorite woman. of these bosses so far. I kind of like her, but I think I like the plant one more. Oh, yeah. The first one. But, uh... Shoot, what was I saying? Right, the uh, the different modes from the last one. I was... I'm trying to think. It w what was the other one? It was a be the beach mode. Yeah, the beach mode, which was which, hard. Yeah, oh. because the a lot of... Like, the worst part were uh, some the of the Baron bosses. Fight. Well, just the bosses in general, because it seemed random when they would drop the items. Yeah. And when you literally need the items to survive, randomness just doesn't cut it. Exactly. Like, the mechanic should be fair. Yeah. So you'd have sometimes when you can go about three quarters of the fight and never see the item, or sometimes when it would just. the item would appear in the very beginning of the fight. And this fight's not even of, hard so much as it's just like. Yeah. Well, my problem here was like, I didn't know exactly what to do. Yeah. It didn't indicate like at all how yeah. to do this, because a lot of boss fights will at least kind of share something. Or, yeah, they give you some kind of visual cue, but. I think you had to tell... Yeah, eventually had to tell me, hey, try using the turtle thing. And even then, it took me a sec to actually use yeah. the... Um, because that didn't work. You took some damage there. Yeah, I kept taking damage because I was so stubborn. I was like, there's something I'm missing here. What's wrong with this? Yeah. Plus the rocks just hurt like yeah. shit. I suggested turtle mode, and you suggested turtle smash. Yeah. Well, my, my original idea was just using the sword. That was why I had equipped the, uh, the scorpion girl, because she reduces how much uh, magic little sword thingy yeah. does. And I thought, oh, okay, this should be fine. You know, I'll just use the, the sword thing and it'll, you know, I can do a whole bunch of damage. And I didn't realize I had to do this 
stun thing to her first by stomping on the uh, the eyeball or yeah. whatever it is. I'm assuming that's an eye. Yeah. Because, like, this fight's more of, like, a time waster than it is, like, hard. You know? Yeah. Cause it, like, once you figure out what it is, because, like, the beginning is just whack-a-mole, mm-hmm. and then after that it's stomp on the eye, and then that's pretty much it. There's not... Because yeah. she doesn't have any way of fighting back once you do the, the stomp, so it's... It kind of feels like the hardest part is figuring out what the hell you're supposed to do. Yeah. But then the whole rest of it is just trivial. Yeah. Which, I mean, I'm not a fan of. Because, like, it's great that they make you think outside the box, but the fact that once you figure out how to do it, yeah, it's piss easy. At least it's over quick. It's not like some of those bosses where it's like, yes, I know how the mechanic works, but then they make you do it like eight but you times. Drag it out. Yeah. Or they make it very, very time-consuming. Yeah, like the, honestly, the double Baron fight. Like, it's a good fight, but it goes a little, it overstays its welcome in oh, the previous the, game. Yeah. Where you're fighting against what, the Squid Baron, and what was the other Baron? Uh, Hypno Baron. Hypno Baron, yeah. Like, yeah. I like that fight a lot, but... but it, it drags a bit. Yeah, and the fact that we we did it, like, six times. <laughs> yeah, well, that, yeah. And you each just, time it added it's a, a special layer of bullshit on top of it. Yeah, that that did not help in the slightest. And yet it's still one of my favorite fights in that game, but, you know, like, even I could admit, it, it definitely it, gets long in the tooth. It needed to pack it in a little earlier. Yeah. See, and there we get actually some plot dump and some development, and a character is thinking the way I was thinking about it. Yeah, like, how come <laughs> she didn't get captured? Yeah. Well, see, the the way that the dialogue is kind of leaning toward is that maybe whoever captured her has a reason for it, but not, oh, well, she's not as good as everyone else, sort yeah. of Because I, I think that's what we were getting at, is, yeah, she, oh, she's, they, they're not going to bother with Shantae because she's not as powerful, let's just get the other ones. Yeah, she definitely seems more like, you know, oh, darn. But now I'm beginning to wonder if they did that so she would do the hero thing and open up all of the underworld for whoever the real villain is yeah i just part of me wonders if these other ones aren't tied to it somehow but i don't know that, uh, that's my we theory o- we only have a little bit left in this episode so i'm gonna throw out a very brief theory yeah i want to say that they are tied to it but maybe not voluntarily yeah like even they're being duped yeah we also were but, miffed here because we thought we would be able to loop back around and finish up that other tiny chunk of the map, and yeah. instead it just teleported us to the entrance. Because there's a, a chunk in the, like that little tunnel in the eastern part. Yeah. And I remember saying, "Oh well, we'll we'll tell you what's we'll just go check it between episodes and tell you what it is." It was just a, a heart squid. Yeah, it's another it's heart work. squid, and it was also the solution to that one long tunnel where I idioted us into an explosion. But I think we're gonna go ahead. Like this is where the episode ended. Yeah. Normally, before we were idiots, so. Next time we do have the uh, the audio fixed. Now, you're welcome. <laughs>